In this demonstration, I'm going to talk about the brachial plexus. Now, let me tell you right away from a long experience of teaching medical students and postgraduate surgeons in training, uh, the very mention of the word brachial plexus makes them feel quite ill. I won't disguise the fact that the brachial plexus is difficult, complicated, but it can be made understandable. And the reason for surgeons in particular to know something about the brachial plexus is that it does uh, get damaged in trauma. It gets invaded by tumors. It gets pressed upon by a cervical rib. And in order to diagnose the condition, you need to know its anatomy. Let me first of all say, why do we need plexuses? Why have we got a brachial plexus and a lumbar plexus and a sacral plexus? Well, the fact is that the brain, by and large, doesn't send messages to an individual muscle. It sends messages to groups of muscles. It's very rare indeed that you need to send a message to say, flex the flexor digitorum superficialis to the left ring finger to do that. Much more often, many, many times a day, you send a message to say, grip your hand. Now, when we consider the trunk, the muscles there, the muscle system there is very simple. You don't need a plexus. Each intercostal space, and we've talked about this when we were doing the thorax, each intercostal space has got its own nerve segment. Hmm? The simple movement of moving the chest muscles. In the, as we go down, when we get to T7, from T7 downwards, of course, the lower intercostal nerves are moving the rib spaces of the lower ribs. But from T7 downwards, the nerves are also going in to, the, to supply the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. Again, they're very simple. And as we go down, these nerves, T7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, are all that's needed to supply abdominal muscles and their simple movement. However, as I say, when we come to the limbs, particularly the upper limb, with its complicated movement, we need plexuses so that groups of nerves will collect together to supply movement. Let me give you the simplest example. The radial nerve that we're going to talk about is going to run down the back of the arm and going to supply everything in the extensor group of muscles. So when I do that, when I do that, when I do that, all the extensors are going to be supplied by a group of nerves collected together from the brachial plexus, the radial nerve, to supply the structures down the back of the arm. Let me draw you a, a diagram, a simple diagram. Here are the five roots of the brachial plexus. C5, C6, C7, C8, and here's the branch that comes off the first thoracic, the roots. These are going to join together to form trunks. Here's the upper trunk. The middle trunk just continues C7 root like so. Cheats a bit. C8 and thoracic 1 join together to form a lower trunk. Each trunk is going to divide into an anterior and a posterior division. Here's the anterior division, anterior division, anterior division. And the posterior division, let's put it in another color. Posterior, posterior, posterior. It'll make it simpler if I just change that round and make this one make it easier to draw, make that one posterior. 
the, these two anterior divisions are going to join together and they will form a chord. This is going to be the lateral chord of the brachial plexus. This is going to continue here as, so sorry, as a medial chord. The posterior divisions will join together to form a posterior chord. And as if that isn't bad enough, the lateral chord and the medial chord each give off a little trunk like so. Which join together like so. Now we've got the brachial plexus. The posterior chord, as the name implies, is going to run down the posterior part of the arm, I've already mentioned that, and it's going to become the radial nerve, the nerve that runs down the back of the arm. So there's the posterior cord. It also gives off a very important branch, hmm? the axillary nerve. I'll be talking about that in my next lecture. Also runs round posteriorly, and it's going to supply the deltoid. That's his main job, posteriorly. This lateral cord continues as the definitive musculo, musculo, sorry, cutaneous nerve. This is running down in the median, the median nerve. These are the definitive main nerves of the brachial plexus. And this running down medially is going to become the ulnar nerve. So here we've got the roots forming the trunks, the trunks dividing into anterior and posterior divisions, and the divisions joining together to form a a posterior division running down the back of the arm, a medial and a lateral branch, uh, musculocutaneous and ulna, each giving off uh, a branch which joins together to form the well-named median nerve running down the median of the arm. On a, a nice proper illustration uh, from, from the Bible, Ellis's Clinical Anatomy. Uh, just to recapitulate, the roots, C5, 6, 7, 8, T1. The roots each divide into trunks. Upper, this continues as a trunk, middle, lower trunk. Each trunk divides into anterior and posterior divisions. The posterior divisions join together to form the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. It's going to become the radial nerve and give off the axillary nerve. This is an old edition, and I use the old term, which I think is better than axillary, circumflex, because the circumflex nerve runs circumflexly around the humerus, now called the axillary nerve. Here is the lateral cord, continues as the musculocutaneous nerve. Here is the medial cord, continuing as the ulnar nerve. But that cord also gives off a rootlet here, these two cords joining together to form the median nerve, which we're going to see in the next lecture, beautifully running completely down the median of the arm. Now in the next uh, slide, I'll show you the brachial plexus uh, as it really is.